So if somebody chooses to use G1 or G7 over a custom curve for whatever reason, what is the best place to find an accurate BC for a G1 or a G7? All right, so it's a good question. Uh, a lot of ballistic engines don't give you the option of running a custom drag model. So if you're running one of the apps on your phone and you think it's handy and it's neat and it was free, but you only have a G1 or a G7, you don't have the custom drag models, obviously it's much more accurate to run a custom drag model. But if you are running a G1 or a G7, you can download the app, the Kessel app, and be able to find the actual G1 or G7. You can get it from Brian Litz's book and look at what the G1 or G7 there, uh, or look at what it is there. Or you can actually go ahead and use what they tell you. All right, so when they, they tell you it's a 0.496, like Sierra says the uh, 175 is a 0.496, it's not. It's a 0.475, but it is a 496 at the muzzle. That's the deal. They're not lying. They're just telling you what happened at the muzzle. It's not the average BC that is happens over transonic flight, and that's what Brian gives you because that's the number that you should plug into a ballistic engine. So for years and years and years, I said 0.496 to 0.505 lot dependent. So halfway between those two is 0.5. So I told the military all over, I said, hey, let's just use 0.5. So guess what happened? We used 0.5. Trued our muzzle lossy, got hits, you know, all the way out, no issues. Then they go home and they shoot their chrono and they call me back and they go, hey, Todd, uh, our muzzle lossy is not the same as we trued it. So we're getting a different number, but because we use the higher BC, it's going to give them a lower muzzle lossy. All right, so it's self correcting. So I go, all right, understand. So what's your question? I said, which one should we use? I said, I'm doing the one I was hitting all the way out to 1200 with. And they go, oh yeah, that's what we thought too. But the real deal is, if I have a error in, in BC that is high, the computer by truing is going to give me a error low muzzle lossy, but a perfect impact hold all the way through. So this is something that we teach. Plug in a G1, plug in a G7, plug in a custom drag model, and plug in a bad G1 BC. So we take a 475, a 243, G1, G7. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll kind of show you the, these on the board. If we take a G1.475, a G7.243, a custom drag model, all right, which for the 175 SMK, and then we'll use a G1 and give it a bad 0.51. So that, this is a big difference right here in, in BC worlds. All right, so then we go to 800 meters, and we true them all to what actually happens on the custom drag model. So let's just say this is eight mils. So we true this to eight mils, we true this to eight mils, and then we true this one to eight mils. What you're gonna end up seeing is this is now a 2504 muzzle lossy where this and they're all shooting the same muzzle lossy. All right, same gun. We're just using different ballistic engines. So it's one gun shooting the same bullet but we decided to use a G1 and a G7 custom drag model or a G1 with a bad number. This is going to give us a bad muzzle velocity. But every 100 meters we check at 200, we check at 300, we check at 400, all the way across and we write down the dope. We're never off more than about a tenth and that's only on this one. And it's still within a tenth. It's usually 0.07 is the further set we're off now. So people go, yeah, but it's off. You got to remember your standard deviation is about three times that, or at least twice that. So your extreme spread is going to be four times that. So this is well within the noise. That's why truing works. So it's like Brian said, when he saw truing and understood, he said, truing's not an option. You have to be able, you have to understand truing because it fixes everything. It fixes all the unknowns in the environment. Me and Brian both agree. Use a chronograph. Use the custom drag model. That's the best choice you have. But when that doesn't work, when something in the system is awry and you don't hit where it tells you to, true it. Truing fixes everything. It's done. So the reason we teach truing to all my classes is it's real easy to run a chronograph and it's real easy to plug in a custom drag model in your Kessel. Simple. And you should get hit right off the bat. It's kind of like what y'all are doing with the Ruger. Instantaneous, you know, uh, results. But in the field, in my world, we get a box of ammo. We have a hill 700 meters away. I don't have a chrono in my truck. I can easily give you the exact same number, right? Within three rounds. So now I don't need a chrono. 
but I need to understand the rules of truing. Where can things go wrong and what those potential errors are? Truing too far, what's the problem? If I don't have enough gyroscopic stability retention, I may be dropping off, which looks like a low muzzle velocity. That's why we true inside of trans and we don't go past trans. So it could be that my barrel's being degraded or my bullet's being degraded by my barrel. All right, so I would, I'd still, I'd want to true my muzzle velocity to catch what may be a bad BC in reality because my barrel did it to me and it's going to give me a velocity that corrects based off impact.